Welcome to Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. And the two gentlemen that are with me today have also helped you get off. On various occasions and various platforms, reality TV personality and content creator King Dwarf and award-winning gay porn star Joel Someone. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. How are you guys? <laughs> I, uh, we're we're great. We're doing we're doing I'm really tired. awesome. Easter, Eastern time is kicking my ass. Yeah, and because all he does is work, he's exhausted. Because <laughs> oh all he does God. is work. This Ooh, little guys. motherfucker. I remember Ooh. one of the last interviews I did with you. I said, "Joel, someone is everywhere." Now, Joel, someone, and King Dwarf are everywhere. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> the place you've been on reality TV together. Uh, actually, you've been on a reality TV show, but you yes. also did a quiz show just recently. Yes. Like, talk to me a little bit about what the last year has been like for you guys. It's been awesome. I'm so I'm. I, I started this journey a while ago, and I was attempting to get into the public eye at, from the start. Whereas when he jumped into this, he actually was the opposite. He was kind of a person who did his own thing and really created his entire kind of kingdom because he got it but um bump okay. <laughs> on his own on his own like all of this was very much cr created by him in his own privacy and so i've been in really impressed with the level of like he jumped right on the carousel mm -hmm. like he like he it didn't slow down he just jumped on and he's really managed to do it with some grace <laughs> you baby KD, can I call you KD? Sure, KD, I love or, that. Yeah, yeah, okay. I love that. So KD, the last time I spoke to you, or the first time I spoke to you, I uh, we about had hinted. Raunchy. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. Good times, that good times. Dirty ass motel. <laughs> yes. We had hinted that, or you had hinted that you were in a relationship with someone. Yes. Right? Yes. That someone happened to be Joel someone. Yes, it was. So that's that's blossomed obviously oh my How god is it? What, yeah what Tell so us much a bit about so it. much has happened since our first interview together um so yeah he was courting me and so i was basically flying back and forth after that interview because that's shortly after provincetown happened so he went back to la i was going back to my day-to-day -day life in jersey and um he really instilled like you know, let's go for the big times. Like you don't need to be stifled in Jersey and let's it's, you need, you need to be where you belong. And that was coming out to Los Angeles and getting opportunities. And so that really stuck with me after Provincetown. So I made it my mission. I remember he called me to uh, go to his brother's wedding and I was like, okay, am I going to do this? Am I going to go to his wedding? Like, is that jumping the gun? Is that, is that crazy? So I fast forward. He didn't go to the wedding. I did not go to the wedding. <laughs> I had him do the old Jersey, like come home, meet mom, which she loved him. And, um, I picked up the dowry, all of that you did, stuff. You did. Yeah. Um, and so basically, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a hit. And he, we stood, we, um, hung out in Jersey. We hung out in New York. And then we, I kind of went back to LA with him and it was, it was a really, it was that. And then I fielded an offer. Some, someone I was chatting with, it had informed me that, uh, there was a show that he could be, <laughs> would be great on. <laughs> and meanwhile, he didn't live in LA no. and it was, it was for go, go for the gold. And I was like, oh my God. And I told him, I'm like, so you could, and he's like, well, I don't have a place to, I'm like, no, no, you're staying with me. Yeah. You stay with me. We'll figure yeah. this out. Just get here. Like it's yeah. one of those things. Like that's that's been my career. Like it's you did if you if you don't turn down an offer, you'll make it work. And so he got to L.A. Thankfully, yeah. they were having a Dolls Kill sample sale, <laughs> and thrift stores had extra trampy small clothing for literally, us. Literally, and yeah, no, we we put together his go go for the gold he thing. Put, a yeah, week. He, he he was like the best boyfriend because he he was like my he turned into my little personal assistant, like driving me to Burbank every day, getting my outfits together and coordinated, you know, giving like getting the little twists that I was going to do, like the reveals. Um, he was like, that's yeah, that's a whole other topic, but. I mean, just first getting to LA and the whirlwind of jumping right into reality TV, especially for the number one, I'm new to Los Angeles, never been there a day in my life. And then it was jumping on to my first reality TV show. So I had to get that's 12 hour days on set. You know, it's something I never did. I was, in, I was, I was the director, producer, everything of my own, you know, content. When I felt like doing something, it was like, okay, I'm going to do this in my room. But you had the mystique of, no one knowing you, but that, everyone knowing you. That, that like, and, and, he, and he says it perfectly. It's like everyone is saying now that they're putting a face to my online persona. And it's like, 
we didn't know who you were behind the screen. And now they're getting to meet me at GoGo gigs. They're getting to meet. There's, I'm, I'm literally on their TVs and their streaming devices now. So it's like you know they're finally putting a face to me beyond just what I was doing, which was you know Chatterbait and you know OnlyFans. And so, and that's the most heartwarming thing about this is fans are coming up to me and they're so ecstatic because they've been following me since day one. Like I did a Portland gig and they were like, you know. We're in the, we were in like the first thousand followers you had on Twitter. Like that's how OG we are. And I love that. That was sweet to me. And they were like, you know, we've seen you blow up. And it was the most like heartwarming thing that they've been like, you know, my ride or dies essentially, you know? You guys met in Provincetown. Yep. Yes. Okay. What was that like? What was your, um, like what, what happened? You guys saw each other? So, okay. Like, so the, 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 that actually kind of pivots from the last question a lot. Mm. I had seen him for years online, for years and years. I, I had seen you, his. I told you the backstory. His, his work first, and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I had seen his stuff for years, and he, and didn't believe he was real. He was all. He was in Jersey, and I lived in New York, and I couldn't get him to meet me. I was. I was petrified. I was petrified. And I and I didn't realize how protective he is of his dwarfism. Scary. Like I, I didn't really understand that until I met him, very, and then got to see his DMs. It's very Romeo and Juliet. Oh, he, oh always, okay. he always used to give me like Instagram like video messages, like, "Hey, what are you doing tonight? Like, I'm in New York. Like, do you want to come by and just hang out?" And I was like shaking when I would get them. I'm like, "No, no, I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm scared." Well, yeah, and I get that now. It I, was, and, and it was one of the reasons I would do those. Is that's a nice way of kind of human. I, I I'm, I struggle with text. The coldness of text. Is, is hard for me to deal with. It was it, very warm and welcoming, but I was so petrified because it was the next step for me. It was somebody who was obviously very well known in this industry, an actual like full-fledged porn star. And I was like, I don't know what his intentions are. And that was the wall that came up and that was the block for me. And at that stage, I, w I, I couldn't let my wall come down. And you know, I kicked myself in the ass because this could have happened five years earlier, but you know I believe there's a time for everything. But keep going. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I, I honestly, you got you nailed it right on the head. And you guys, you had that, you had that scene um, or that shoot in Provincetown. He was with his friend Richie at the time, yeah. and and I and Richie was a, was a little bit of a gatekeeper. He's very sweet. I like him, but I, I could tell that was like his, his muscle. Okay, that was kind of like a hey, you're not, hey, you're hey not buddy, getting, buddy, you're not buddy, leave, to the leave, the, leave the dwarf alone. All right, <laughs> two feet, two feet, buddy. And so I remember immediately, I was like. I worked over Richie. I was like, hey. <laughs> and this, I, like, it was within five minutes. Like, I met him on the street. We said hello. And then I went and met back up with my, my ex and my friends at the time. And I was like, let's go over to T Dance. To, to, to tea dance. And he was in his room in one of those things. I love tea dance. Oh, yeah. love tea dance. And so I ran upstairs. He's like, hey, do you want to come upstairs? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I handed the phone to Richie. I'm like, Richie? Your cameraman, and so I, Richie held the phone, and I was like, "We're gonna do some sex right now." I'm like, I'm getting this done. I've, I've been I've been working too hard to try to lay on this boy. <laughs> he was mass That was an iconic scene. It's, um, it's yeah. it was viewed over like I think we finally hit over a million views on that clip, and um, yeah, I, I felt so. The thing about it was all my walls came down once I finally spoke to him, and obviously we spoke prior. Like he ditched his friends at T Dance, and we like we were like texting, and he came like we talked before we even started that scene, and then like I honestly felt so safe with him, and that's what it was. I was like, this isn't somebody that's going to try to utilize my image for his benefit. It's like this is going to be like a collaborative effort, and he's also going to be a friend. Like we, our chemistry just kind of, I felt chemistry right off the bat. My work stands for itself. It wasn't like, hey, I'm just someone like, yeah, can we just get this done? Like it wasn't like, hey, like I'm obviously going to use you for this content. There was, there was definitely a chemistry towards it. Yeah. And, and I noticed that when, when we did start like talking and stuff, I got to see his DMs and I immediately yeah. saw why he avoided yeah. messaging like to come over and stuff like that. His DMs are full of like the top tier porn stars who are like, hey, I want to put the biggest penis you've ever seen into you. Uh, and yeah. it's, and I, I, the I get where to approach a guy, right? Yeah, they, yeah they, they, they weren't necessarily the best. And not saying yeah. that's all of them, but I, I definitely could see a narrative of like, I need to use you because you will be a notch Absolutely. on my on yeah. my thing. And so, no, it's it's there's there's ways to come 
at me. Like I, I, I think this, I, it's even funny when I'm in new cities and like I'll be on Grinder, you know, just like seeing what's around, you know, and like guys will be like, hey, do you want to grab a cup of coffee? Like, hey, can we chat? Like, obviously, you know, we're horny on here, but like, hey, let's 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 actually be humans and like go grab a cup of coffee. And I love that because nine times out of ten. Yeah, I will fuck you after because that's hot to me. It's not just like, hey, do you want head? Exactly. And it's hard because you, when you start to get bigger and when you don't start the way you started, mm-hmm. everyone kind of starts that way, I think. I think in our industry, everyone wants to start with the like, we're scared to meet someone, da 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 da. And eventually they lose it. And so that's why when sometimes when you meet people who have huge curated followings, they've kind of gotten it to a little bit of like a meat processing plan. In the sense that they're like, yeah, I got this hour long block for you, and da da da. Yeah. And and I I I don't disrespect that. You feel like cattle. You know what I mean? Yeah. You it know? becomes an industry. But you forget yeah. that those people who are you are still feeding off of newer performers, and so that's kind of when you do meet up with those new people. Sometimes where the disconnection is. Like I remember the first time I worked with someone who was using Trimax. I took it personal. I took it. I was like, yeah, yeah. You don't find me attractive. <laughs> Like, you know, and that had nothing to do with it. I know this story. It had nothing to yes. do with it. You know what I mean? I'm not dropping names. But no, had, we're not. I, had, I know. It had I know. nothing to do with whether I'm attractive or not. It's just that's this person's oh. reality. And you can't judge it. You know what I mean? That's just, that's just the, what it is. And so it's, I think that's one of the things that's nice about him is even though he's definitely old hat, this motherfucker's been around forever. Yeah, he, he's, you're still very fresh to this in a certain regard. There's been eras. I like to think of it as eras. Like, you know, I was definitely in my chatterbait, bare bones, like, you know, just kind of showing myself off. And I told you, I was like, I was, it, that was a journey of like self discovery. That was like, am I going to be found attractive, you know, to the world, you know, because I was going through all the bullying and everything that I, you know, my childhood and my teenage years. Just, it's like affirming. So it, exactly. And I got my affirmation from the internet, you know, like most teenagers were doing, you know. And so then once, you know, it was the Twitter error, it was the Tumblr error. That's when I really got huge was the Tumblr error because that was the reblogs. I was showing up on straight porn uh, timelines. I was, straight, you know, showing up on gay timelines. And that was the great thing about Tumblr is where you could reblog, be reblogged everywhere. And then so it just kind of was like followed like, you know, once Tumblr banned adult content, it was Twitter. And then that's when I got kind of like the masses, you know. And I think, you know, and then eventually, you know, fast forwarding, meeting somebody who was so established in this industry and kind of learning from him because I learned so much. Like my career went to another level because of him and, you know, be able to trust this person and date this person was even a greater benefit because like you're not working against me. You're working with me. I also saw incredible potential with you because there's no one like you. There's nobody. And the truth is you earned that privilege. Like it's it's I, I, I he says that and that that means a lot to me. He's, he's like you worked for this, you were homegrown, you know, like you did all this, yeah, yeah. And, and and it's also like I see how protective you are of your image, and that protective person could have never. Or I think that person could have stayed in New Jersey his whole life. I could have and and lived right. a smaller kind of career yeah. existence. Yeah. I'm proud of you. It takes a lot of guts to do this, yeah. and it's and it's like. That's you know what I mean. Like I, yeah. I started this when I was thirty, yeah. and it was terrifying. Yeah. It was it was like a scary, scary kind of idea to go do all this, and then you realize it's a leap of faith you kind of have to make if you really want to commit to anything, whether you're per, any type yeah. of performer. And we you had, already you already had we the had cred. A, we had a lot of really deep talks in, in Providence Sound that really like made me love him more, and like I was emotionally like a wreck. The stuff that he was telling me, he was just like you. You deserve more. You know, you deserve more than just doing what you're doing in Jersey. You deserve to have people have a face to you. You deserve to be out here in Los Angeles getting gigs. And and that really stuck with me. And that was, like, my motivation. Like, I think it was, you know, what was it, a month after? Like, I was like, oh, no, I have plenty, you know, I have plenty of money. Let's do this. Like, let's get to L.A. I have, I have the apartment. Like, I was, you know, scouting people to find a location so I can get to L.A. Like, he really put the flames, on, the fire under my ass. And I say, and not even just to you, I say that to just any performer. Like, it's, it's that's the, you never know unless you try. Like, you know what I mean? I, being a person who grew up in rural New Mexico, being a person who grew up in the sticks in New Jersey, I, 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 we, we, we have a kinship like that. And I remember coming to New York seeing my career blossom and then moving to LA and seeing it explode. Like it's so funny because when we did the first interview, 
we were like in that, I want to say like purgatory time. Like it was like we were fresh back. I was fresh back from P-Town. I was like crazy head over heels for this one. And I was like, is it going to work? Is the LA move going to work? Like there was like, you probably saw it in the interview. Like there was so much uncertainty. Like I was like, Oh, I'm thinking about doing this. And then this is in the early stages and I'm, you know, I'm talking to these people. And it was very much in like career purgatory where I was like, everything I'm saying, all this is going to happen, but did it actually, is it going to actually happen? And it did. Yeah. So, right. So far, yeah. so good. You, you, you did the reality TV show. So go, 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 go for gold for the, on our TV. Yes. That season was what? two. So season one or season two, That was season two. two. Yes. So we did that in September. Um, and then that, I think we did our interview, like what? It was July, August. It was July. Yeah. So it was fresh off P town and, um, I was flying back and forth. And but you didn't know you were doing that. I did. Right. Okay. No, no, no. That just that happened to... That appeared, yeah. He, um, he talked to one of his connections. And so basically that propelled me. Like that was like being on set. That was getting a real taste of like the LA life. And I was so blessed that I had him to stay with because otherwise I would have to, you know, stay in a hotel. You know, my life would have been totally like, you know, in disarray. And um, once I did the show, that was when everything just came in. Like it was doing the podcast, it was doing the photo shoots, it was doing, yeah, it was. I took I, LA, and was, we had to sit on it. Like it, it took forever yeah. for it because they yeah. did it in September and they just just released yeah. it. Yeah, well, I mean, twelve hours a day. Oh, How yeah. long? Okay, so just to give people an idea of going from Chatterbait, going from Tumblr, going from Twitter, going from you don't really have a porn studio. Uh, persona but, yet or, yeah. or um, yeah. bio So yet. I was learning from him. I was like, tell me how these days are going to be. He's like, you're, we're going to get there at 9 a.m. You're going to finish at 9 p.m. because that's how long they have the studio for. And there's going to be a little lunch break. But it's a lot be, of sitting. And a lot you are going to be sitting you know, a lot. And retakes. Like there was reshoots. You know, we'd be in the afternoon and they're like, no, I didn't like how that looked. Let's do a reshoot. Eat. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you eat something. Yeah. Don't oh, yeah. do the bulimic model thing on these things. Yeah. Don't. I know you. I know you want to look your best, and you think not eating is going to help. It's just going to make you. Yeah. Yeah. And it was going into the. You know, we were allowed to. We weren't sequestered. We were allowed. You know, we were allowed to use our phones, and it was me calling him, like really in bad moments, where I didn't mean to impose my insecurities, but it was like everything was coming out. Like especially, for instance, there was an episode where it was the pole dancing challenge, and I've never pole danced a day in my life. And I was petrified and I was calling him. I was calling his ex Marco, who was like the big brother to me. And I was like, guys, what the fuck am I going to do? Because this is going to be on TikTok. This is going to be on Instagram. This is going to be on Twitter. This is going to go viral. I'm going to look stupid. I'm in the beginning of my career, you know, and it's going to be like, there's going to be a Bobo the Clown noise in the background. Like, dun, 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 dun. like, and that I was like, do I walk off and like, just be like, I can't do this. And, and I told you, you never do that. You never, you never, if you want. Tensions were high with us because I'm screaming. We went full jersey at each other on the phone. I wish we had the phone clips. I honestly would, give, would have given them. If and, you do, I'd love them. And <laughs> like, I'm screaming at him. He's hanging up on me because I'm being like way too much. And I, in that moment, I know I'm being way too much. And I, I, I wanted an answer for him to say, you know what? Okay, quit. But he wasn't giving me that answer. So I was fighting back. And whereas, like, it was kind of like I had the devil and, the, and like, the angel. Because, like, Marco totally understood. Like, he was like, listen, I get it. You are so protective of your image and what you put out there. And this is not going to be curated by you. So they're going to just, if they put that Bobo the Clown, you know, sound effect, that's going to go viral. And if you don't want that to happen, say, you know what? Thank you. But no thank you. I'm, I'm done. And I was, he was it's like, the boo boo the fool. Boo, yeah. The boo boo the fool music. But the truth is, they are storytellers. Reality yeah. television is storytelling. Good, bad, ugly. You need to give them the story. Yeah. And the more honest you are, the better you're going to be portrayed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the truth is, you can spin it. Like, if you have a good oh, yeah. attitude, they will get truly, it's a reality yeah. TV is a leap of faith. Oh. And you just have to take it. Yeah. But if you refuse to do it, if you throw a yeah. fit, if you want to kind of die on a hill, you will die on a hill. You yeah. know what I mean? And they will cut you out. I was just and they will... in a corner on a phone. With Seriously. <laughs> and, and, you, and we're not going to name names on that either. But um, you saw people who threw a fit and walked yeah. off. Yes. And they didn't get the fit Ooh, edit. Yeah. They didn't get any yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. They got the quick cut. Yeah. Because yeah, I kind of feel like I'm not familiar with the channel. Uh, out TV. Out TV. TV. Okay, so it's out TV. Yeah. But I'd like to think that 
if you're doing it on on a reality TV show on an exclusively gay channel, it would probably be a little more less Real Housewives, you know, less for that. Like yeah. you're trying to build something and oh, you don't completely. want to build it off like toxic no. You know, stuff. No, no, no. You're not a toxic I came person. off, I'm not at all. And I came off very genuine and my fans love that. Like they're, they're like, there was no ego with you. You were very, you were there to have a good time. You were there to genuinely show off what you can bring to the world. And I was, I was fresh in LA. I didn't, you know, there was no ego. I was like, hi guys, I'm, you know, the four foot six, mostly dick guy from Jersey, you know? And That's I think a great t- literally four foot six, mostly dick. Thank mostly you. Dick. Thank you, thank Eddie. You, Eddie. Uh, that was Eddie's tag. That was Eddie. We're I called Eddie at seven in the morning on the way to set. And I was like, um, Eddie, I need a tagline. Yeah. And all we hear is dead silence on the phone and an inhale of a cigarette. And he goes, give me a minute. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, Buddha. And so he's like, he did it. <laughs> four foot six and mostly dick. And me and him were like, died in the car. We were driving to Burbank. Yeah. We were literally driving to Burbank yeah. when he gave it. Sorry, we have to give him that credit. That was, yeah. It's too oh, good completely. of a line. Shout out to Eddie. You saved my life. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie Carmen San Diego. Yeah, Eddie Carmen San Diego. Um, so basically, yeah, and then that stuck. They loved that at the studio. And, um, and I think I even said it in the promo video. It was like, my friends told me to break a leg. Good thing I brought a third. Ew. And I tried to do the whole Cardi B thing. And it was, it was really fucking funny. I have to work on my ew. Yeah. He, ew. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, it was thanks to Eddie for that. Because I was, I was a wreck just showing up to set in general, let alone thinking of a catchphrase. So, um, yeah. And then, the, and then, so with the pole dancing challenge, um, I had the two strippers from Portland help me on set. They literally took me outside. We were on the streets of Burbank. Like, I wish they showed this because this was iconic. This would have been like that great a la, like, untucked material. So, they're um, 30 minute episodes. So, yeah, only have- yeah. yeah. So, um, um, so, we're out on the streets of Burbank and they're literally teaching me how to, like, attempting to teach me how to pole dance on, like, these, like, the parking signs. It's tough. Yeah. And, parking, like, uh, we're in the parking meters. Parking, uh, or the parking signs. Like, almost stop signs, okay. you know, and the, yeah. the lampposts. Yeah. And, like, I, we're in Scruff Speedos. Like, Skimpy, because Scruff sponsored the episode. Johnny Scruff was there, everything. And, like... Oh, that's his last tra- name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, um, basically, and then I almost, like, ca- causing, like, a car accident. Because people are losing their minds. Oh, so it's probably out there somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, it, it's, 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 it's true. If you Someone have the footage, yeah. please send it to me. <laughs> But, um, yeah, and then also, like, another challenge was, we can say it now because, you know, it, it wrapped and the season finale just aired. It was the lap dancing challenge. Um, that's where my mobility really came in. And, I, and that's what I always touched on in my confessionals is was I am not an able-bodied individual. There, you know, I'm, people are like, you're not handicapped. You're not disabled. And I'm like, yes, I am handicapped to a degree. You know, I do have the most mobile form of dwarfism, which is achondroplasia, and I don't need crutches. I can work out. I can, you know, do, um, you know, normal able-bodied individuals, you know, what every, the everyday people do, but there are limitations with me. And that, in turn, was the, you know, a lap dance. You, you do need a lot of mobility. If I'm performing one on, you know, Joel, I'm going to have to make it sexy i'm gonna have to make it fun and it's gonna involve me from going to the floor shaking my ass at him and then going on his lap and making it a thing and so and also to do it on a a tall man like i was winded like i look back i can't even look back at that performance because i still have secondhand embarrassment and people are like it's not as bad as like you know you got the really good edit on it and but i hear myself like halfway through the performance like like okay let's let's get let's keep making this look good and um, it looked it looked clunky, and I even said I I, pe- I tear myself apart for it because I just I also had the unfair advantage, but you know what I schlepped it up and I was like you know what I'm gonna do this because I'm not a quitter you know at that point I was like you know what I'm top six at that point I was gonna you say know? and also everyone wants to win I know this from being nominated yeah a lot yeah a lot everyone wants to win yeah not everyone wins you know what I mean no, it's, the, uh, it's it's the ride and top six, exactly I was going to you say know? you had a great ride in that so, you were the heart of the season yeah you, like you know what i mean it's it's hard the the great thing about it is is other aspects of it like yeah. we did fucking smart 
That was yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. it's kind of like family. It's like dirty family so, feud yeah, give a little a, bit. Give us an idea of what fucking spot uh, is. That was fun. That was through Topher. Topher. Yes. Shout out to our good friend Topher. Topher. We love Hi, you. Topher. At Daddy TV. Daddy TV. Yes. We love you. But to, the, Topher was really cool. He, he was one I had been speaking with for a while, and he had, been, he had already done one season of Fucking Smart, and it's with Sophia. Sophie Success. Sophie Success. And, and Willem Willa. Belli. And, and Sapphire, Sapphire Slay. Slay. And they were phenomenal. They're they're a crew that works together a lot. So they're yeah. they have they're amazing yeah. banter. Yeah. But then getting to jump in with them was really cool. And it's fun questions. It's fun queer, dirty, trivia. yeah, sex trivia. It's yeah. you win a butt plug. Like I, you know, I'm not going to say who won the butt plug. <laughs> it has it has it aired yet. It has. It okay. has. It's okay. available to stream right, on so TV. Some, okay, yeah. so somebody, yeah, somebody, yeah, yeah, they have to watch it. They have to go. Where do they go to watch it? They can go on the Out TV. It's on all streaming services, OutTV.com. It's available on Apple TV, Roku TV, and the UK on Fruit TV. And I know that because I was constantly promoting all of it. So I'm like I a self-promo that. machine. <laughs> yes. We had to do a f- who does the best fake orgasm. And so what we need him. We, no, 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 no. We, we want your opinion. Yeah. Who does the best orgasm? Was it me and Willem or him and Sophia? I'm just saying. I, I need your opinion. Yeah. All right. So you got to reach out to them. Reach out to yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> um, while all of this is happening... Joel, you're out there too. You're, you're, kind of putting putting uh, KD all together, right? Helping him out in LA and stuff. You're managing your career as well. What's happening at the same time while he's while he's on the show? Me doing studio stuff. Uh, I've continued to do studio, a lot of studio porn, and that's amazing. I, I've uh, been doing a lot of bi porn, trans porn. He's did something really. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. He just did it. He actually just did a video that still takes my breath away. Um, it was date night with this really great studio. Yes, um, with four play films, I did date night, which is an independent uh, uh, film create porn film creator. Okay, it's uh, mostly for women. Okay, based, but the but cinematography it, on it is uh, gore. I can't stop fangirling over it. Yes. I really, I really, it really is beautiful. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful scene. We're both wearing suits, and it, it, you know, I it, it just tells you like how much so little can go in porn. Like they had rented a really cool space. Me and the other performer were wearing suits and they had a cinematographer there. And it was just, you know what I mean? It was, I see how it's for women because it has a very seductive tone to it. It's not that like, let's get to the action like most gay men. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're playing, they were playing cards, they're playing a card game, then they're watching a movie. And that's kind of like the height of the passion. And like, listen, if it wasn't porn, like if that wasn't classified as porn, I was like, I would love to do that. You know, because it was so sexy. And, and you so, can. You, you can know? and you will. Yeah. That's the great thing. And that's what I tell like every performer. It's like I am a certain year in the jump. Every year. Every year I've met you, this career has gotten bigger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's gotten bigger. Like it's great, gotten like, better. It's like little time capsules. Yeah. Yeah. And, that one of, and that's one of the reasons that I love your interviews is I look back on number one. Like I, and, the I'm, I'm, and I think I'm wearing a tank top in all of them. <laughs> Am I wearing a tank top in You're, literally every yeah, interview? Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's a Joel Summer brand. Right? Yeah, yeah. I just go, just go to show my arms off. Yeah. But, but, tru- but truly, if you can last in this industry, oh, yeah. and I mean survive it, and that's yeah. the hard thing, too, is like the people who don't make it. Like there are people in our industry who die. Like, and, and once I started working with lots of trans performers, it, it makes you realize how grateful you are yeah. to have your footing. Yeah. And have your kind of found family. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, I, I have a really different level of gratitude. Um, so I, I always say that. That's like, if you really want to embrace this business, put all of it into it. Go balls out. You know what I mean? Like I, I was telling you the space we're in right now. We just dressed it for the the Diane Sawyer interview setup. <laughs> put the bed in here. We can film a porno. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, yeah. it, put if you have creativity in you, whatever it is. Put show it me, towards this job. Show me the receipts. Show me the receipts. Sorry. Show me the receipts. I, I had to get that in there. <laughs> you can make it work anyway. And mm-hmm. it, a, a room is kind of like a person, like anything. You know, you can. You have to be able yes. to adapt. Creative direction. Yeah. Like, I am blown away. Like, the stuff we've done, whether it be, like, little, like, first wake up in the morning. Like, let's make this, like, you know, cozy. We're both waking up. Let's have, we're having, like, morning sex. He wears a CPAP machine. And I've never seen a porno with a CPAP machine on. And he was like, you but know what? But that's so real, though. I'm, ha- I'm half asleep some mornings. Like, obviously, at his apartment. We're sleeping. We're waking up. And there's fucking lights on. He's ready to go. Because he'll be up at 530 in the morning. And I like to get my sleep. 
And I'm like, everything was set up already. Oh yeah, he's like passed out with his machine on. I'm like, baby, I'm milking you this morning. Yeah, already hands on my morning wood. He's like, yep, we're gonna get that load out. And I'm like, uh, what? I'm like, it's okay, baby. Yeah, it. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just, just relax. Let oh, it happen. The CPAP yeah. community is going to love it. If yeah. they, is it out there already? Oh, yeah. it's out there. Okay. 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 But it, it, it's, it's awesome, though. He's wearing the machine. It's like, <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, I'm getting oxygen shoved down my throat. So it's a very, like, high intensity, like, you know, I'm number one, I'm like, <laughs> still, I'm still probably still in fucking REM. Like, so I'm like, it's, he knows this is all true because I'm like out of it. I'm like, I'm a, uh, and I look. Gross. I mean, it's this is not a Beyonce. I woke up like this moment. You know, it's like you're pretty sexy. I hit, so I, that's why I hit it in the morning. So, like, I he can't like hear me what I'm saying because it's all Darth Vader. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's just taking control. And he's like, yeah, just lay there. Like, I'm just gonna take control. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And he goes balls to the wall, and people love it. Like the videos come out so funny, but they yet they're so hot. Like, people are like, I've never seen fucking, this is CPAP porn, and it's so hot. I feel like that's the difference with a model like like Joel, to be honest with you. Because your, your photography, like, the people you work with, like, you give everybody a chance, which is cool. Because the what you can do with someone else, you don't know unless you make it happen. Exactly. And some people don't they don't they're not behind some big hollywood studio they're not behind some big uh porn studios or anything like that and they have uh, a shitload of creativity in them too yeah and that collaboration that's one of the things i've learned about this recently is the collaboration between the models is one thing but if you're a camera guy too or you're doing a cinematography directing or whatever it is you're collaborating with these people too. Yeah. And I've seen so much footage out there. So many people out there, so many models that just grab. I always say it's, you know, there's a cameraman and then there's a guy holding a camera. It's not the same thing. No. But, you know, and I'll even speak to that too. It's like, you know what? If a dude on Grinder reaches out to me and wants to film my stuff for free, fuck yes. I do that he, all the time too. He's the king of that. The, has... only thing, the only thing with that is you will see me like giving direction while I'm fucking. That's oh, yeah. Like, which when I first started filming for Cutler X and I was his cameraman, he would cut all that out, but he, he'd be literally ripping someone apart with his humongous wiener. And he's like, I need you to go underneath and get the, uh, like giving like, it, it, like I see myself doing that now. Like I'll be like middle of, I'm like, I need you to like go from behind and get the penetration okay. which i think is, i think it's funny i think it's yeah. also part of the theater of what this is because truly someone wants to be that character in this role as well like someone like i remember that was also me when i my pre-porn life like my, a lot of my porn is based off of like masturbatory nostalgia when i first discovered porn and sexuality it was like I think it was like a Sean Cody video where it's these two crazy hot dudes and all of a sudden the cameraman's in there blowing him and he's clearly not one of those dudes. But you're like, oh, you know exactly, you remember ones, that video. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that moment you're like, okay, this is different. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, there's a certain, certain theatrical quality to it that if you embrace it, and make it part of the natural process. Like I, I did a video where there was a grinder guy, and I put right in the goofy Joel Someone interview. I'm like, "Hi, I'm Joel Someone. Hi, I'm Kyle Wild." And that motherfucker is off of Grinder. We are being filmed by some random motherfucker who just said he wanted to yeah. b- to film this. But that's the great thing about him is he brings that like versatility and that personality. Like, and he could be the one that would get somebody off Grinder and like to to record a scene, you know. Yeah. And that's what like that's his brand. See, yeah, I I, I know what you're saying. There are some times, though, when I watch porn and I think to myself, but move, I want to see. Because yeah. you're almost there, you know? Mm-hmm. You, you almost have the shot and then all of a sudden it's not there and you find yourself kind of lifting yourself up, but nothing's going to change. Like, it's already shot. So, so that was my biggest thing with that. But again, like, your photographers, your photo shoots, uh, the studios you work with, they're all over the place. And I feel like that versatility allows you to become, first of all, more well liked in the industry because you're easy to work with. Obviously, you can work with anyone. Tell me a little bit about, for instance, okay, so you did some bi porn. You did some, you've done some trans studios or trans yeah, porn? Yeah, well. I, I, I've done several trans studios. Don't leave I, me for a woman. <laughs> that's all the art. Right, we're not going to get into the Twitter troll <laughs> nonsense. But yeah, what's, can you tell me a little bit about, oh, that's adorable. Do you get hate? I know that we started. That's and that is actually exactly what he was referencing. I opened the door right to you that. know it's it's hard because like 
we live in a society where it's very polarized online and the things I'm doing mean a lot to, more to some people than they sometimes mean to me. Yes. And, and, that's, and that's not saying I don't love or respect my work. One of the reasons I do everything is you never know what's going to land. You know, you never yeah. know what is going to be your opportunity or your doorway or window into something else, into success, into creativity, into something. Things that go viral now. You, you, you don't, you don't know. know. You, know? you don't know. He just did, um, I mean, besides our stuff, our stuff does extremely well, and I'm so grateful because ours, we post it, and it blows up within the hour. And, like, he just did, like, he did a callback to his gag, The Fag, and it was with a coworker of mine. It even says that in the video. I danced This with is one of King Dwarf's key coworkers, and I brought yeah, him home we and I Han. Him. We danced, shout out to Han, love you, babe. Uh, we um, dance at Hot Dog Sundays together, and he's a really good friend of ours. And, I mean, that video I've seen blow up. Up, because it's a, a throwback to gag the fag, which is you know a little bit problematic in, in, in nowadays. But it was something that really meant something to me back in the day. Like back in the day, yeah. like what is this? This is this isn't like anything else. Yeah. But you know, like I said, it, it's polarizing in the sense that you know some people have a visceral reaction to it, oh, yeah, and some people don't like they it. And so it someone who's seen me in my Mormon boy or family dick storylines were like, "That's the dad. He is the dad." Seeing me then be in a different storyline or be in a different genre of porn entirely will sometimes throw people and if you want to be turned off by it i'm really sorry i am i'm deeply sorry that the, whatever i did turned you off don't watch it why are you watching this yeah go you know what i mean you don't need to you don't need to watch this thing. you don't need to follow me i'd appreciate it if you did <laughs> i really would but you don't yeah. need to it's not like a need I understand that there's a whole kind of like movement of people to where their creativity is their kind of trolliness and, and and I'm not even saying it as like a diss or anything like that. Some people that they don't have the the kind of ability to go out and have a creative outlet for that. That is their creative outlet. Them creatively trying to shut me down is that. Thankfully, I have the wherewithal to withstand it. That's why it's really hard for me now that I work with people who are di like may, maybe don't. Maybe someone who's on the fringe. They're beautiful, but they're struggling. This job is sometimes a little overwhelming for them, and they do read into people's comments. That those are the people I feel for. And you handle Twitter very well, I gotta say. Like I gotta, I gotta. No, like, sometimes I don't handle it. Period. You, like, like he is very like. Here's don't respond new, to that person. Here's my new project I put up. Call it a day. Retweet it a couple times. Like he retweet his studio stuff. It is like he even like mentioned. He's like you are more so very. You'll put everything out there where he keeps like a very curated image of like. I'll be like, guys, oh, my God, this just happened to me at such and such. You know, I, I feel a way about it. You know, and people engage with that because they know I'm known for that. And with him, he's like, I want to put that out there. Oh, no, 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 because that's just going to – that's just trolls. That's going to that's gonna open the door to – and I and I like the contrast between us because he's very – like it just goes back to like I'm all work and I'm not going to put the personality on Twitter. Nope. Like, well, it's not even that I, I put my personal. You do. On Twitter. You do. I don't put the personal. The personal. The personal. Yeah. And it's, but I, I don't disrespect that about you. Yeah. Honestly, I, that's something yeah. I very much admire about you. Yeah. It's, it's something that I, I only. The only reason I say that is sometimes, you know, when you put something out there that is personal, and you are feeling a certain way about it, yeah. the person who responds is going to be the person you don't want to respond. Yeah. The hundred million people in the world oh, yeah. that you would take advice from yeah. aren't going to respond. It's going to be that yeah. one motherfucker. It's like yeah. you, you yeah. would have something to say about yeah. it. You know what I mean? And that's how I look at it sometimes is when yeah. it is something personal, just imagine you're going to say to that person whose advice you don't want to fucking hear. Yeah. And right. that's what sometimes happens. Um, the other part of it is too, is the people who do that kind of trolling, you aren't the first person they did today. You're not the 15th person they've done today. They are going from comment to comment to comment. And just like creativity, they're trying to see what hits. They're trying to see who's going to... Who's elevate them. And then when it doesn't on? hit, they go into their boyfriend's DMs. And mine aren't like fucking a mess already. And they'll be like, you know, Joel's going to leave you for a woman. Right? Leave you for a woman. Or and a I'm trans like, boy. Yeah. It's going to be a trans that boy. Every time he does a trans, a, a trans film, I get, yep, he's going to leave you for a trans. And then when he does a, it's like, it's literally like how, every time a new scene comes out, I'll get a DM from somebody. Yeah. Well, I had a, I had a conversation in my messages about the last interview we did because you had just started doing bi porn, and this guy's like, yeah, yeah. Well, and then this guy was like, he huge fan of yours, and he was like, oh, I'm a bit thrown off, uh, and I'm like, well, this is performance. It's also 
fantasy. It's, it's There's so much that goes into it. And if we're not allowed to, kind of like comedians, right? If we're not allowed to say what we want to say in a comedic performance or act the way we want to in a fantasy, what do we have left? Like if we can't, it's, it's just, it's that moment, right? Like nobody... <laughs> Nobody really wants to get raped, but people have a rape fantasy, right? Have, so it's not necessarily saying, okay, I want this, but sometimes there's outlets that you need to have, and some of them are sexual. Fine. And also it's about to, if you like me, if you like me, if you really like, like me, and if work. you really like my boyfriend, you want us to succeed. Yes. The end of the day. We want to be in our bag. I, 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 yeah. I want to make this a feasible career. I want to make this to where I can make a living oh, yeah, and I want to succeed. Yeah. If you really believe that for me, yeah. then you will support the fact that I am trying to do things to gain momentum in my career. Completely, yeah. I want more. I'm not afraid to admit it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And being one thing is cute. I'm glad it's, he, it's, you know what I mean? I don't w- want to put him in a box. And that's something I loved about him is when I first met him is like, he does everything, you know? And he's, his, his business mantra is so admirable because he's like, you know, that's money left on the table. That is a gig that is, I'm not in that I could have been in that can take off, that can go viral. And, you know, it's, 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 I didn't win a Gavian award for gay porn. I didn't. I know. Yeah, it was you know what I mean? It was, it was yeah. your buy scene. I didn't. Yeah. I did not win a Gavian Award for, for gay porn. Yeah. I would love to. Yeah. I would absolutely love to. I didn't. Yeah. I won it for buy porn. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that fucking means something. that was a very hot scene, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It was the second time I was with a woman. Yeah. Vanessa Vega was fucking incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's one of those things that, like, Emma, I, I, I look at this as a journey. If you stick and do the exact same thing all the time, that's fine. If you like the safety of things, I appreciate that. That's not my existence. I want to know people better. I want to see other people's life experiences because I think they are beautiful and relevant. You know what I mean? And so I think that's, I think that's all part of the journey. I still prefer to be with man in like as a relationship, as a relationship, relationship, when it comes to the daily, I like being with a man. Sorry, trolls. Uh, you know what I mean? Like uh, having a partner, having someone who uh, to yeah. look after me when I'm not feeling well, fe- having someone who I can call on a bad day is this man. Yeah. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's that. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Well, shoot. You know what? Just so you guys know, you've reached halfway point in, in this episode. If you contact either of us on DM, more likely me. He has a d- deeper DM than I do. A I'll send a you DM. A, he is a balls deeper DM. <laughs> DM me and I will send you an Easter egg Dropbox link to, you know, a, a video of us fucking. How about that? Uh, if you get a video of us, I will send you a video of us doing sex to each other. If you DM my, my Twitter. Okay. Yes. I know. And, and that's very well eloquently said, you know, that's, that's his career. He, he, he wants to delve into those different branches. You know? well, and you lived a niche life. Again, you lived yeah. a life that was niche, and you took it to the extent. Yeah, you really did, and 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 that's admirable, and and that's amazing, and that's yeah. super cool. And your trolls could be super fucking pleased about it. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. But the second you stepped out of your niche, the second you you started working with others, the second you started collaborating, you had rocket fuel in your veins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't even just say that about my boyfriend. I say that about any performer. Yeah. If you step out of your comfort zone, you don't know where you can go with it. No. It yeah. could be the sky is the limit. Literally, literally in this industry. And yeah. I'm not the type of person who's going to then tell you to worry about your trolls. Yeah. As I look into the camera, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to worry about your trolls. I'm not going to say, oh. well, what about your image as a gay porn actor? Yeah, no. Gasp. No. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not going to do that. That's not fair. That's what someone who doesn't give a fuck about your career would say. No, no. Someone who wants you to stay exactly where you There's are no will growth. say that. There's no growth. And that's the biggest thing is in our relationship is like, you know, we're both each other's cheerleaders. Like, you know, he'll be doing, he'll be doing this new, you know, this new film and I'll be like, you know what? It's going to be an easy day. Don't get in your head. You're going to kill we it. We need to also mar- mention Marco Napoli. I'm sorry. Marco Napoli is still in the fold. I oh, can't. Yeah. I, I, he, we, we, he's still like a, my partner love, and he's still, he's like Marco. a great friend. I, we still share a place together. When he's in town, we sleep like Bert and Ernie next to each other. Like he's, it's he's very, my best. I'm sorry. I, I have to make that clear. very cute. Platonic. No, because he's a huge cheerleader for him as well, especially because they've both done the studio journey together. Yeah. Yeah. You so guys. So it harkens back. We're really brothers at this point. Yeah. Like me it, and him are brothers. It harkens back to like, like there's such history there. And I love to see that because 
you know, their careers both took off, you know, and they really both, there was growth for each other and they both helped each other. And I hear all the stories of like how they got through really fucking really difficult times together. And now it's, it's, you know, when I jumped into the fold, I see, you know, the brotherhood and it's like one big queer family. I mean, that's one we were. And so when you watch your scenes together, we're basically brothers doing it. So <laughs> that, uh, hopefully that like colors the narrative for you differently. Marco Dapoli my brother. <laughs> yeah. Marco's, Marco's good. He's amazing. He's, he's living half the time in Europe. Yeah, like he's know. constantly in London and Barcelona and every which fucking place. No, yeah. You know, he, he's, he, he's goals. He's hashtag goals. I said it. His life is goals for me. He's, he, and, yeah. and we love him. And like yeah. I said, he, he really did. Like when I was yelling at his ass, hanging up on him and saying, you're not fucking quitting that show. He called Marco and he's like, yeah. Joel yelled at yeah. me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can yeah. I have some help? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was definitely the voice of <laughs> Marcos. The definitely the voice of reason. We because I get emotional with him because I love him, and it's like the love, the love. Like we're Jersey I, Italians. I'm from fucking Jersey. The Italians gonna come out, you know. I, I flip the table on, and him. I start screaming, and he starts screaming back, and I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. And we I, don't do that that much. No, we're no, not no. that. No, we're not that. No. Di- no type that that bad but, but with bit. marco it was more that big brotherly type thing which i needed to hear he's like you know what if you need to do that that's you but i'm gonna tell you not to and day one day one of meeting you the day one of meeting you i said marco napoli is going to be in my life as long as he wants to be yeah like you know what i mean we are we are yeah, he is my best friend i love and him. we are beyond best friends sometimes we text all the time it's 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 really great he's like i like he's a big brother to me and it's, it's such a great family well good that makes me feel good but, but that's yeah. another question people always ask me too like how do you live with your ex i never i ne- that's one of the things honestly where i'm like you can't you can't i can't bring myself unless it's Unless it's mentioned or said, so I can't be like, well, what's going on? So relationships are very complicated and also very interesting and layered. And People are like, people would be like, oh, how do you feel about him still living with his ex? Like, doesn't that bother you? And I'm like, no. And I, I text Marco every fucking day. What, yeah. do you, what do I think? They're like fucking again? Like, and it's secret in their apartment? Like, baby, it's not that deep. Yeah. Uh, people looking in. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. The way they see things, right? The way they perceive but things. But it's funny. It's, it's like they'll try to stir the pot. You know that. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like but like, it's amusing. I find like, it amusing. Like, what did Marco and Joel Is something do? going on? Like, yeah. why, is it, why isn't King Dwarf there with them? Like, yes. And they get all They travel scenarios. together separately without me, too. They, they've gone to Atlanta without me. Yeah. They've gone to Austin without That's me. Cool. These guys have traveled together with each other. Yeah. I, and I love that. I love Because I know they're protecting That's each cool. other. Yeah. You know. Like, I trust no one more so than my life than Marco. Yeah. You know the, what I mean? The so, trips we do together are really, really fun. I mean, I've, I've gotten to see so many great places. Like, we just did Austin. Like, it was, what, a month ago now? Like, we did Austin, Texas together. And I, I was there for a go-go gig. He flew in to join me. And it was a really good time. Like, you know, we, we ate out. We saw the city. It was just, it's, it's so fun having that companion, especially like that big brother type figure to be there with you. You two haven't had sex yet. I kind of want you to. Like, I, I would want them to do a scene He together. loves friends has... I love I want a fist him. Yeah. I'm getting like huge into fisting. That's really? my new term, by the way. Friends test. Friends test. Friends yeah. test. Oh, I love it. I love making friends fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I do like like when I go to a club and I see two friends together that are like girlfriends, I'm like, I want to make you guys fuck. Like the ones who would never fuck. It's like, like the two they're like, no, we're girlfriends, honey. I'm like, no, you want to hit this? I want you both. He makes it happen, apparently. I have, I have not witnessed yet, but apparently it's happened. That sounds like a good studio idea. Friends good, oh, no, I've already coined. It's out there. Okay. It's out there. If you want to make yeah. a site for a Joel, someone made up the term. Sorry. Speaking of that, speaking of studio, speaking of like next year, right? What's, what do you guys want to do? Are you planning stuff together? Uh, where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself in another year? You know, the one thing that's been, I've been baking in a little space for us. Because the one thing that's really nice is we're both really strong performers and we have very strong opinions and stuff. And so like having little bits of space, I miss missing him. Like it's the kind of thing that when I, when we're away from each other, Mm -hmm. the second I get back to you, I want to spoil you. I want to hold you. Like we, we haven't seen each other for like a week in the second. I'm like, we're going to see a show tonight. We're going to have a date. And just like, it's, I, I like that. I love, I love romance and I love romancing this person who I absolutely love. He does. He does. Um, I think there's LA has been really generous to me. I'm I'm I still wake up every day there and I'm like, I don't believe I live here. Like it's so wild, like Saturday I'm going back and it's like I'm like, wow, I have a place to jet off to, and that's my home in LA. And it's like 
it doesn't feel real. I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I look outside and I'm like, it doesn't still feel real to me. And it's only been, it just was, it just hit six months that I've been living out there. And so to go back and to, you know, keep working and there's so much that's like in store and like, you know, we, and you're getting bookings now, like people yeah. who you're flying to North Carolina. I know you're gold. flying to West Virginia, West you're Virginia, flying it's, to it's, Vegas, it's Vegas. It's going to be Portland. It's, it's, you know, my schedule is filling up and it's a great feeling. What is it filling up with? You're not doing studios yet, right? It's not studios. It's more so go, go gigs. It's meet and greets. It's people. Yeah. And it's like getting to have fun all night and, you know, put a show on the box or the stage, wherever I'm at. Like I met some really great promoters and they do great parties. And, you know, and then when I'm back home in LA, I still do, you know, hot dog Sundays. And, you know, that that's my, you know, day to day work when I'm out there living in LA. And those are the great places where I can just put on a show and the LA people love me there. You know, what is it going to take for a studio to get you uh, in a scene? Um, I think I really, he, I, I, I don't and, mean and to answer weird, for that's him. A loaded, that's a loaded question because I think there's still much potential in reality TV. I was going to say he's been st- like, I, I, not to say, not to say anything would shut down your career nowadays. Yeah, I, I, truly, we're at the point where I everyone mean, does. Everyone K, does. Every, everyone K, does. K, you laid the foundation. And it's Queen true. Daniels. But the yeah. truth yeah. of it yeah. is, yeah, is he's been getting courted by like reality people. He's been getting courted yeah. by by TV, TV, and not to say that porn. Is the, I love being in porn. Porn is amazing. Yeah, I wouldn't start him there. Yeah, you know what I mean. He I would. It. I would say there is other places he we need to look many, into. He said it many times. Like I'm going through. I'm getting. I'm going through an agency, and I'm that though that are that is my immediate plans is getting in an agency, working with having somebody you know who knows my what my image is and how to market me correctly. And, and that's what I really want to find. And I'm in the stages of doing that. And that is the next step. You're also beyond your sex. You're, you're beyond yeah. just being for sex. Yeah. And not saying that porn is only sex. There's, there's plenty of it that has very pl- playful qualities and stuff, but you are more than just your sex. And it's still great because I have the versatility of doing that, that show. Like I was doing Google for the gold. I'm doing the press junket for that. I'm doing all that. And then it was still fun to go on Twitter and, you know, take a nude selfie and be like, hey, guys, I'm super fucking horny. What's up? I still have that versatility, because, you know, and I can still be myself because with reality stars nowadays, yes, you can have an OnlyFans and show that other side of yourself, you know, and then there's the nerd side of myself. You know, I'm in my apartment in L.A., you know, streaming on Twitch. And that's, you know, and it's like I have so many layers to me. And I don't want him to come from my bag. <laughs> the truth you heard it here the folks. truth the truth is i'm yeah. like i need you to stay yeah. out of my work like, stay out of my lane <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm yeah. yeah you're getting all my gifts bitch no but um no and it's i don't i don't think studio is the right time um you know studios i won't go in through and name them but many approached me at the gvns and we i spoke to the, the the top people there and they were like listen we want you in for a scene and we've been trying to, like, literally texting me from numbers and emailing me. And I'm like, guys, it's just not the right time for me. And it's about, like, you already built an empire from your sexuality. Yeah. It would be for publicity, which you could. But yeah. and landing want, reality or a lot TV of money. you so much would it, Yeah, that's what, you know, I, it's that's what brother, I mean. Big the, brother. It's like, I live in L.A. now, and I have that, like, coursing through my veins. I'm right around the corner from the CBS lot. Like, I want to be on Big Brother. I want to be in the circle in Canada where they film that. And I have the connections. Like, I'm talking to people, and I'm making the connections. And they're like, you very well can be on there, you know? And that's my, that's my, that's my fucking dream. So you, know? you, whereas porn was my dream. That was mine. I see. Yeah. That's what I meant. Like, there, you never wanted to get studio you you did your own thing you don't necessarily yeah. need it but you also necessarily don't want it exactly okay yeah 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 that's what i meant by that question oh, yeah. i'm sorry i didn't mean it yeah. to be loaded i just i i'd be curious if anybody was like hey i'll give you a million dollars yeah well, uh, you also work in porn, my friend. <laughs> you know that's not how that's I know. I that's, know. <laughs> excuse no, excuse yeah. me. Not 1970s I mean, million. I, mean, I was going to say. I mean, <laughs> it was, it's almost like harkens back to like, you know, when they tried to get guys for Playgirl. And they're like, you know, we'll give you an offer to finally. If I was like never nude and I was just doing this, I'm going, and they're like, wow, we really want to see what a dwarf penis looks like. Yeah. You know, we want you to do a full frontal. You know, and we'll give you X amount of dollars to go full nude. 
would I have done that? Probably because it would it would have tapped the exhibitionist in me. It would have tapped the you know I want to show off my body. You know, and if I would have never did what I did, like eighteen year old fresh on the internet, you know, showing off my body, um, yeah, that would have been a really hard like temptation. I probably would have been like, you know what, Joel, I want to do this. You know, the money's right. Why not? You know, but I and think- also porn is a one time payout. Exactly. It's like, so I we're going to give you this much, and then we keep it. I think that would have shot my load too, very too early. And I think I'm, I'm edging in my career. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's people don't and – and it's a funny way to say yeah. it because it's they don't know what's coming next. You know? It's they're like, they're like I'm, getting, I'm getting messages that are like, now we're seeing you on TV. And I saw you on just Chatterbait with a couple hundred people in your room. Like the level of growth, you know, and they're like, I never expected to see you on a go-go show. We didn't even know you want you liked go-going. So it's like I'm constantly throwing stuff at my fans that they're loving, you know. And then it's like the ones that know that I'm a true nerd, and I'll be like playing Zelda, you know, naked, you know, and on Twitch. Yeah, well, yeah. You're not on Twitch, but I would go to the OnlyFans. Well, and and also it's like you forget how you could monetize off of that. Everything. Like, you, like any of you the dr- drag race everything. girls that that go and do an OnlyFans. Make a fortune because they were on television. And I'm getting this one, and like I'm telling him all, like I'm like Twitch, like let's do a couples like stream, you know. And then if we want to do something, if you see our Twitch, it's going to be funny because I'm going to be a bumbling idiot. I'm 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 the noob. Yeah, one video. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm like, and he knows he loves my nerdiness. Like you know, he gets the nerds, and it's so funny. Also, try to see him interact with them, but that's another story. Like I love when they like throw like, oh, I'm playing Final Fantasy. What are you up to? And he's like. Is yeah. that like street, is that like Street Fighter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll fake. Oh, he fakes it really good. It's, I fucked a lot of nerds. Oh yeah, I fucked a lot of nerds. Yeah. So I'll be with him. It was funny. It was the other day. Like he was talking to somebody that he had. Like he was slid into his DMs. Like some some fan. And he was like, "Yeah, I'm playing Final Fantasy 16 right now." And he's like, "What's that? How do I go off of this?" <laughs> yeah. Is that the one with Mickey Mouse? <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom Hearts baby. So then for you, Joel. Next what's next? Year. Yeah, what's what's what other what studios or what what haven't you done yet that you want to do that you want to get you into that you want to uh, next door? I did work with next door. I okay, finally, yeah. that was one that was oof, I wanted so bad. Yeah, I finally I finally did a worked with a, a next door studio of us. Uh, uh, yes, baby, and it was it was amazing. You know, it's it's. I want him in reality TV. I his He's, reactions. And I and I actually love doing stuff with him. And as and I'm gonna literally, if there's always an opportunity for us to do stuff together, I'm gonna love to bring him along because he is reality TV gold. I he's think. he's he brings also, it, he gets it out of me too. I this, do this little bastard because I dig because he has that curated image for porn, and I kind of dig beneath the surface. I'm like, no, show me that raw like energy. I have. Like I write on my on the side, I have my own side projects, independent film, and all that. Yeah. He he would be an amazing independent film, yeah, actor. Not yeah. even just and independent. I just, it's funny you say that. I just general. received a really good script from an independent film that was asking. Me. I, and do it. Oh, if, absolutely. If you find that you can, there there are, there's that. There's another thing. You know, there are certain there are certain roles where if you put stuff together in your head, you're like, this person would be perfect for that. Yeah. Joel always finds a way to get... The facial, he lives right free in my head The sometimes. facial expressions alone. Yeah. I mimic them because they're so hilarious. I've stolen them from all my boyfriends. Every, I, <laughs> I steal... I, I have, like, when I catch something that someone does, I'm like, oh, I like that. I like, I, I like that. That face you're making I right now. I find myself with my friends now. I'm doing this. Like, like when I really shut somebody down, I'm like, point and check. Like, you know, and, and just checking, checking this. or when something bizarre, I'm like, like or, or, or just, but this is all reality TV as well. It's just kind of like, 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 like the nuances he has, <laughs> like, baby, don't stifle your, like, like I want him to make that leap. And even if it's independent, so he could still do his porn career, not be confined to what studios would expect, you know, or look down upon the porn. Aspect. I also know that the, po- and, and, and I'm sorry, I, I hope I didn't make it sound as all. I, I understand the power of the medium of porn. I get it. Like it's it's something that so many people watch so and many people, people don't talk about. Ab- absolutely. It's also an aid. It's it, it, I'm shocked they haven't come for us because it's one of those things that like as queer people, especially young queer people, that was our only outlet to see yeah. male mm-hmm. sexuality mm-hmm. was porn. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know that I am teaching a whole generation of people 
by being myself mm -hmm. and putting out the most genuine version of myself. You can't lie with that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's important to yeah. know. Yeah. And it takes a good 10 years to see that generation come up yes. and say, hey, you're this person. I used to jerk off watching your stuff or I yeah. used to do this. That's why staying in it matters. Yeah. That's why people like my porn dad, Cutler X. Cutler X has been in it for a while. And he gets a whole, every generation, he gets a different group of people who say, hey, you. Yeah. I saw you. And they'll be more excited to see him as a celebrity than other celebrities. Because they're like, you know, because coming to someone? That's a There's whole other say. experience. Like, I remember coming to Armand Rizzo and being like, and then meeting him, I'm like, it's um, you. Yeah. It's you in real life. <laughs> it was great. He, you know, and, and that was so great doing Google for the Gold because I, 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 I made my whole time on there I, I constantly reinforcing that i was doing this for the dwarves who've reached out to me mm -hmm. and the dis and the dis disabled community that i'm a part of and they were like never in a million years would i find myself doing that never in a million years would i take off my clothes and it just expose myself to the world like the way you had just the fear of the backlash or the comments or the trolls the hurtful things that they could say and you put yourself out there completely no safety net you know, let me ask you something. Do you feel that because because there's an allure and also like, you know, yeah. being, if not the first one of the first uh, doors that that yeah. and that's the correct term no, right? I can, yeah, you're totally, yeah. out there doing this? Can you see the possibility of because, you know, we're in a business that makes money. Mm -hmm. that tries to make money and exploit as much as possible. Can you see the possibility of somebody? Another like, dwarf, let's say, just yeah. kind of getting taken advantage of by a studio that hasn't been able to get you, but will go for something or someone similar to you. Um, that's a funny question. That, that's a funny question for personal reasons. But um, yeah, um, I think that the ones internationally who do really want to get into um, some type of you know, fame and recognition. I think that they may take the offer if it's presented to them. And I want to, and I hope they would reach out to me and kind of like err on the side of caution. And I would be more than happy. Honestly, I like can look right in the camera. I'd be more than happy to give them a crash course. Um, and, and to still let them be protective of their image, to tell them to be, to have, no matter how good the money is, no matter how good the offer, you know, is, and they might have a really sweet offer, you know? And I just want them to have, like, err on a little bit of caution and remain true to themselves and be comfortable for what they're signing up for, you know? Don't do it just because they feel pressured to do it because a, a well, well-known performer is telling them to do it. You know what I mean? Because I, I've had that. You know, I like he said, I've had top tier porn people that, you know, I, I was like, oh my God, he's in my DMs, you know? And I felt like, oh my God, if I don't work with him, is this my opportunity gone? You know, and it's not. Because I hang out with them. Now they're my peers. I see them every day in West Hollywood and they're like, hey, how are you? We're friends. But you know? that could also be said about any new performer. Like, truly, true, yeah. if you're true. 18 years old. You're right. And you know what I mean? Like, it's, ab abuse is abuse is abuse. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, you, you spoke directly to it in the sense that just be, as long as you're okay with it. As long as it's, yeah. you know what I mean? As long as someone's not going to get in your ear and change your mind about it. Yeah. As long as when you sit there, you are, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. These, these things last forever. They do. You know what I mean? I want this. Yeah. If I, and I'm okay with looking bad sometimes, if if it's something that I really believed in, I also am willing to defend. Yeah. I started this career thinking like, and also the door you opened, you opened a lot earlier than you think. You know what yeah. I mean? Just yeah. because you're starting a porno doesn't mean that you this path you hadn't started a lot sooner. That's the truth that you need to understand about being a sex worker or a porn performer. Is that door you opened a lot earlier than you think? Yes, and. Worrying about where the next one's going to lead you is only going to stifle you if, if you want it to. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're really having doubts about doing this, look at that. Don't look at the, at, at the job or let people get in your ear because people will. And that's, what's, and that's one of the things that, like I said, I'm working on trying to do is like I'm very protective. I don't let anyone penetrate me. 
except they do. No, I, but like, but but truly, like, penetrate me in the sense that like their words are getting through and bothering me because I remember kind of almost going on that path. I remember before I did this, I was one of those people that kind of erred on the side of concern, even with stupid things like Instagram, like someone who would do like shirtless selfies on Instagram, like, yeah, just. What what are people going to say? Yeah. Like, what is your community but, going to say about your but, the but selfies? I'm, I'm I'm speaking in terms of dwarves because you know I know how somebody can get you know used you know but totally and you know and it's it's our story to tell you know if we want to put ourselves out there that's you know that's our privilege and so but yeah I mean if they want to go out there and I want. I want to see other dwarves in mainstream. If I could see more dwarves in porn, if I could see more, you know, I'm applauding the ones that are doing their own OnlyFans content, you know, and working with performers. And uh, it's, 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 it makes me really happy. And it also just like with the go-going, you know, they're seeing a dwarf go-go and I'm, I want to be the trailblazer. So I could have more of these people, these other dwarves who are petrified to say, listen, you know what? KD did it. I could fucking do it. And I and I've always been on your side, and I've always kind of. But it, it, you just said it also earlier in the interview. What if I had met you five years young, earlier? That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? It's the kind of thing that, like, this job is a leap of faith. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I and I and I and I I've learned a lot of your perspective with being with you for a year. I think there's a right time for everything. I think I think you know it's funny because he wasn't even going to take that Providence Town trip. There was yeah. so much going on in their lives yeah. that it was. That was like, a, that was a leap of faith, that trip, you know? And hearing about it was like, I could have still never met this guy. Like, and it's funny because, like, would I have moved to LA? Would I have still been in Jersey? So I believe that things happen for a reason. And this happened for a reason. This was to get me, propel me out of Jersey and bring my career to like, like life. Yeah. So, anyway, the, the, I, I know that was a really long winded version of the Coco. Uh, I have a lot going on. Yeah. I, yeah. Sorry to, to taper to, to taper no, back. No. To it. It, it's just it's. I don't know. I don't know what the next step is. It it's every day is such an interesting adventure. Coming what? back to New York has kind of been very nostalgic for me in the sense that I get to work with people I worked with when I was absolutely no one. People who gave me a chance and just said, "Hey, let's have a sitting and take some photographs." And I'm ha- I'm happy to have a name. For them to say, hey, I'm photographing this person. Whereas before it was like, I'm, pho- I'm photographing someone. It's like, at least you're photographing Joel someone now. And, and I, 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 think, I think a lot of the future for me is that, is I'm trying to kind of stay humble and still be that person who doesn't turn down gigs because I think I'm bigger than them. I, 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 think, I think everything is an amazing collaboration in life. And yeah. seeing you grow. And actually, if anything, seeing my friend come in here after the first time I had worked with you doing this and seeing all your beautiful equipment, seeing, hearing about the interviews you've done, it, it's, 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 it's magical. This job yeah. is, is magical because of the people who do it. Yeah, yeah. Every, every year that you are on, it's, there are certain, you know, you find your guests, you talk to them, and you, you figure out how everything's going to go. Every year has been progression on both ends, but also while I was driving here, I'm thinking to myself, okay, these guys have had a year because you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Cause I've seen people that kind of like you said, will put out a block or say to you after you've flown somewhere, after you've driven somewhere, I don't know if I have time for an in-person interview, which sucks yes. because I've had it happen. So driving Ooh. here, oh, oh yeah, no, yeah. I, I made a whole province town trip. No, 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 I'm no. good. Oh, you told me the story. Oh yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so driving here, I'm thinking to myself, these guys have had a year. Yeah. I wonder how this is going to go. Will they have time? When I said I was running late, because I was like, oh god, I'm running late. Yeah, we were like, you guys no were like, problem. no worries. You were LA early. early. I was like, damn. <laughs> I definitely LA was LA early. early. Oh yeah. Was two and a half hours early for yeah. LA. Time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, no, I absolutely appreciate it. And I, I enjoy the growth. I, I've only met you I know. recently. I, and you know why this, this episode between us is so special? And I'm going to tell you why. Because it's the affirmation of everything I put in my first yeah. episode with you. Yeah. It bring me to tears. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you, ever, like, if you harked on it. There was nerves. Like, I didn't know if our relationship was working. I didn't know if you, you know, we were going to talk after Provincetown. There was so much uncertainty in that interview. And like to see it come full circle into fruition, 
this is a really special episode for me. At cool. Least. I appreciate yeah. you guys doing it then because the chairs are also pink. I know. I love it. It's Barbie, so, Barbie core. It's very. Uh, you're right. This uh, is a Diane Sawyer Whitney yeah. Houston interview. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Show me the receipts, Diane. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and 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 just to t- to tap it off as well. We've also gone through a lot. Like I I, I've we've we've dealt with death this year. We've dealt with yeah. we've gone through a lot of shit as well. There's a lot of not great has happened. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not that type of person. Like you know what I mean? I'm I am constantly like clawing to be positive and trying to keep that up because that's really what that's what motivates me honestly. Mo- like I the positivity for the future and really knowing that good things are going to happen and not getting kind of like dwelling on the things that hurt. Yeah. Because I want to choose to be I want to be positive. strong for my boyfriend. I want to be strong for my best friend Marco Napoli. I want to be strong for my community. And I also want to show that this isn't an awful career. I want to show that this isn't something that's going to ruin your life. Yep. And that's something also that I've learned too with doing the history this year or this season on the podcast, which is amazing. I've learned so much from it. And one of the things I've taken away from it is the fact that there are dirtier things out there than the idea of porn. Mainstream TV sometimes is dirty. Oh, yeah. So many things. Like pharmaceutical, all the big industries are dirtier. Yeah. And everybody watches porn. Yep. As much as they do not want to admit it, you'll find it on someone's private server. You'll find it everywhere. So, this will be fun. You guys are gonna. This is gonna be. Really you guys fun. are gonna. <laughs> people are gonna love cute, this. Right? We look cute, right? We look cute. We look cute. Adorable. Look at our arms being short. Okay, so let's let's do. If people want to find you, okay, and where people want you to first. find you, um, if you're living under a rock. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so my Twitter handle is at King Dwarf NYC. My Instagram handle is at King Dwarf Official. And my OnlyFans is at King. My OnlyFans and Just for Fans are both at King Dwarf. And also, come on, shut in my GoGo career. If you want to see me on GoGo for the Gold season two, go to Out TV on any streaming service available for you. Hi, I'm Joel Summer. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to find me, you can find me on one of my relatively new Instagram platforms because I lost another one. Um, I'm Joel underscore someone or follow one of the few fan sites I have. Uh, Joel someone uh, Euro fans or Joel someone fans, which I have two Instagram like. like, like Yeah, you have fan pages. That's, I, okay. I'm sorry. I, those, yeah. I, 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 I love the, that. Where's the King Dwarf fan club? I, uh, I don't know. Why. All right. You can find me on Twitter at Joel someone one which is also my my just for fans handle so joel someone for just for fans which if you want to find the good stuff go on there my only fans is my only fans is joel someone but they are limiting stuff so everyone knows this if you are a fan of stuff go to just for fans all right because only fans is doing some nonsense to its performers right now like they That's are putting everyone through it. Yeah. yeah well they made their money they did the performers and then they're like oh let's try this yeah, yeah. no no yeah. I, I i would say f- find another platform but i am on there <laughs> if, if you plug. have to We're if you have plug. to go somewhere yeah. for me yeah. i'm also available on on, yeah. on, on to only fans and go watch us him especially on fucking smart that's also on out tv so it's a really really fun episode we really want to know what you think i i don't know who does a better fake orgasm thank you very much both of you joel someone you. uh kd king dwarf thank you thank you, thank so, you much. so much i appreciate it you guys are you guys are riding it all the way up. I couldn't wait to be back on for another. So it's, so it's such a full circle moment for me. So thank you. No problem. I appreciate it. And we can do it again. As long to. as you guys want. I would love to. <laughs> you guys can. Well, try. you should see the hoe I have next to me next season. I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the cameras. Dead ass. Cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. I love you. I love you. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn is available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on X, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram. And if you like what you're watching or listening to and want to be a part of the creative process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help support this audiovisual podcast and YouTube channel, and I can continue making content like you've just enjoyed. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. 
My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. Cheers.